Saturday morning, tractors and straw trailers are parked in the shed. They arrived back just after 11 o'clock last night, delivered two load out. Pretty much everything we bailed yesterday was sold and disappeared. There's just one load sat on the trailer waiting for someone else to collect today. Going back bailing today, I've got more orders as well, which is good. So it's going out for what I want, £99 a tonne for barley straw, if you need any more. Danny's got some as well soon, I think. Anyway, I'm going to drop this grain trailer off, put the tedder on and go and ted some hay for the sheep at Rainhill. Ted is now on, off we go, 724, digital radio. It's a beast of a Valtra mowing, forestry crane on it and everything. Sheep everywhere. They're all hiding in the hedge, it's about 20 in the middle of the hedge. Because <laughs> they can't get through to that field because there's a fence behind the hedge. But I think they're trying to keep out the uh, heat. Are they supposed to be in there? Are they stuck? They look stuck to me. Yeah. I think I'm out of your round. Oh no, yeah, he's out. <laughs> like a cork out of a bottle. Another one out. Come on. There we go. They're all in the shade behind the hedge. Sorry about the dirty windows. And then the ones who hide in that gap have just run out, I think. Yeah, they've just run out. But they're in that den there by that traffic cone. Just shaking this grass out now. So like the time. I want a bit funny. And then it gives it a bigger surface area for this sun to dry it out. So I'm hoping that we can tell it today leave it till Monday or Tuesday, row it up and bale it, so it's cheaper than telling it a few times. It's not a very thick crop, it's where the sheep have been on. Hope you can see on the camera, but if you look where I've not shook out yet, it's quite grey, and then where I've shook out is green, it just shows you, just in 24 hours, how much the sun's dried the top and bleached the colour out of it, because where I'm shaking out is obviously like nice and green. We've also got a bit of a sinkhole in the field, the depth that must be drain underneath washing. Got a sheep tremor escape. Two landers doing YMCA. Just looking at the wheat now, it's uh, ripening. It's kind of looking straw coloured. See where the pit is a bit at the edge of it there. And that one obviously looks quite ripe as well now. So a few weeks we'll be cutting wheat. We've kind of already cut some because there was some mixed in with the barley as well. Quick roundabout update, we've got some curbs laid over there now. Got some manhole rings, doesn't look much different. We've now got the cabins moved off the road into the compound where they should have been all along. And apparently this road is going to be opened northbound on Monday. So it's basically, it's been closed for seven months. That's right, seven months for no particular reason whatsoever. So I'm just putting a bale on the back there that was got some string snapped in the unloading process. We're going to take it back to the field, knock it off the trailer and rebale it in the field. I'm just going to go now, drop the trailer off and check the moisture level. And I've got some cream on and it's made me look really funny and sticky and old. I don't want to get off, but I've got to get off to undo the stuff on the trailer, undo the pipes and the lights, but it's really hot outside. But I'm going to get off and feel a straw, check it's dry enough, there's a big lump here. So I'm going to feel that because if that's dry, the rest is. Yeah, it's perfect. So, bear will come bear this now, get it in. Quick video of the baler. Punching the bales out there. They weigh about nearly 400 kilos. The, saw, the straw is super dry, it's around 10%, according to the baler and according to the probe that Sam's sticking in the bales now, which is good. I'll just uh, try and get alongside. It might be better me film from the other direction, actually, it might be less glare. But I'm not getting out to film because I'll get covered in all that dust. So we're bailing at 8.8k. There's Sam there, moving the bales. This is a barley straw with a little bit of volunteer wheat, so we're going to call it Wally straw. So it'd be good fodder. See it grabbing on the drawbar there. 
these bigger wheels. Adam's there. Bit of, bit of glam again today with Jordan, who's hiding from the camera, looking the other way, pretending she's not getting filmed. I've got the trailer on, obviously, we're going to load it in a minute. We'll get a quick video this way. Might be less glare. So basically, the pickup rail on the front with that little tiny wheel is. That runs along the floor with little tines and it flicks it up into like a stuffer assembly, which is a lot of forks that are doing that. Like that. They ram it up into the bale chamber, then there's a plunger that goes backwards and forwards and squashes it into the shape of a square. And then as the plunger is forward, a set of needles, when I say needles, they're like four foot long, fly up into the knotters, which are on the top there under that grey hood. They tie a knot, pull back down, and then it's got string then in the middle of the chamber and then it stuffs more straw in. When it gets to eight foot, it then throws the needles in again, ties another knot, and then you end up basically forming a bale. Like so. And then the bale drops off there, eight foot long, about 400 kilos. So we'll try and get a video of the pickup really before we get to the end of the field. So they've got, it's throwing it up and then it's got little rollers that keep it compressed so it doesn't fly everywhere. them getting them in threes and then I'm gonna drop them on the trailer and we'll, what we'll probably do is do what we call three and a binder so we'll stack them three high and we'll put a little row down the middle and that holds them all together so that we only need three straps then for going back the yard rather than six got the hog low loader with a wedge up a hydraulic wedge Sam's loading with our homemade bale spike that can fit three or four bales on it at once. Profitably four, but the, the top bale isn't held by a rail. And anyway, where they took the straw to last night to Peter's, he's got a crane out with a massive bale spike on, we can lift them off five at a time. So I'll show you a video of that now. Got a slight technical hitch. Yesterday we folded the ramps down to get the bales on because it holds three and a half bales long. But they're ever so slightly too long, the bales are all like about an inch too long, so they're not quite fitting in. And we can't fold the ramps down on this track, so for some reason, because we've got these plastic holders on the pipes to help putting them in, you see. But the catching, the drip fitting on the back, so we're gonna have to. We can't pull the ramps down basically without taking the handles off and we're not got a little tiny screwdriver with us. So we've got to take the handles off so we use it on this track. We've only ever used it I think on the fast track up until now the ramps. Anyway Sam's just trying to like ram them in and Adam turn the baler down ever so slightly so we can get them on, get these bales back, keep going. I'm hoping that we might be finished quite early tonight because this field's the biggest one to do and the other two are adults who are the same size. And it's what is it three o'clock now and we've nearly finished this one. Still a, still a few to cart like but but we've got another trailer over there and we've got someone on the way for some as well. While I'm off the tractor, I'm just showing you the stubble. It's nice to cut barley and not see any heads on the floor of barley. So that's one of two reasons. One, the head is fantastic and can shave the floor. And two, because we cut it early, it hadn't started to neck over, what we call it. In fact, it's that one there. But that looks, yeah, that's like a bit of a spindly one for some reason. But yeah, sometimes barley stubbles just see heads of barley on it. But this is just really clean, it's nice. They are just fitting, but they are a snug fit. Quick change of plan, we've got kind of like four rows left, but they've been in the shade of the trees most of the morning and the moisture's gone up to 17%, so we don't want to bale it. So we're going to change fields now to a field that's, that's had the sun all day then come back to this one later and Andrew's out with the rower up at and he's just going to roll it over because the top 
bone dry because it's got this like 29 degrees heat on it at the moment but underneath the row because it's quite a thick row is in shade and it's just cold it's not wet it's just cold so it's just got a tiny bit more moisture than that we want so while we've got the weather on our side if it was going to rain we just keep going but while we can mess around change fields and come back we're only going to lose 10 minutes of time and it just means that it's bang on every bale then so adam's just ejecting the bale out of the chain we're ready to go to the next field and me and sam will just carry on getting these in and then swap fields just threw that over and it's wrapped round and like it's not on a hook but when you pull it it's jammed but i can't do that again gonna hook it on one of these anyway that they put on for me and as if by magic andrew turns up with a rower upper just to flip the rows over get the sun on the bottom of them on the fast track the old fast track all strapped on off we go load back just looking here 29 Point nine degrees, 15 and a half inside the cab. So thank God for climate control. Oh, 30 degrees now. What's anyone else recorded today? It's back at the yard, unstrapped. Dusty hands, because the ratchet straps are falling in the dust despite being brand new and like static, everything was sticking to them. So I'm gonna get a little mini Merlot now. Unload that trailer, go back and get some more. James is running the chipper today because we're not combining. We're kind of like spur people, so chip now and get on top of it because we're going to combine it again next week. This is perfect at jobs like this because it's so manoeuvrable. When I go in this shed here now, I'll be able to get it exactly where I want it without worrying about the back end hitting this brick pillars. Gonna temporarily put it in here because it's going straight back out again. Apparently, this straw is getting sold for 140 pound an acre at the moment, and you've got to still bale it as well. In the little four-acre triangle field now, picking up because we've had bales set on fire in here before, so making sure that as soon as the bale is in here, the trailers are here and the merlots here. Still really hot. It says it's 28.8 at the moment here. I heard from someone in Canada yesterday that it's that hot there it's they're not allowed to use anything with a combustion engine between one o'clock in the afternoon and one o'clock in the morning and it doesn't exclude agriculture so basically they can't do any work on the farms because it's so hot there's just risk of forest fire uh, wildfires it just flashed up 30 oh there you go 30.3 degrees four acres baled and cleared in less than 15 minutes by the looks of things. She's just got two tiny rows to do. Last row now, just setting in. Sam stalking the baler for the last bale and we're done. This field's now finished. Just ejecting the bale out the back so we can go down the rows. It's not waggling out the back. They're gonna go now on to the field where we left a few rows, hoover them up. Andrew's brought a trailer back from there and left an empty one there. Sam will throw the few bales on that, will only be 10, bring that back with a Merlot. And we should be finished, maybe half five. Is it slow? What time it is now? What time it is now? It's blocking here somewhere. Yeah, it's about 10 past five, I think. So I think, oh, I can't be right, hold on. No, it's half four now. So by the time everyone's finished back at the yard, it should be getting near five, maybe half five at the latest. Uh, there's just one load of 40 bales to collect that we've left on another field. The guy's on his way for them as well. It's nice having weather like this, where it's not 100 mile an hour. It's not a big rush waiting for the rain. And you can basically say, oh, well, we'll do that tomorrow. A bit like the Italians go, you know, oh, tomorrow we'll do, I can't do an Italian accent. But yeah, that's what this used to say, Fiat stuff for, fix it again tomorrow. Because tomorrow's always another day. In the UK agriculture, we're always rushing because we've always got the weather against us anyway. This year and two years ago, we kind of started a little bit like this. We had lots of nice weather and we could just plan it and say, oh, we'll do it tomorrow, we'll do it tomorrow. And just, you know, stage the work rather than like sit watching the rain for five days and then have two days to try and cram it all in because that's when accidents happen as well. And unfortunately, I heard of someone that fell through a roof, well, two people that fell through a roof like yesterday, I think the day before, serious conditions. So if you're going on a roof, make sure you've got a net underneath or a harness or something because um, it's dangerous. 
Anyway, that's probably about it for today. I'm going to try and knock off early, as are the lads. You can watch another video over there. You can subscribe already. Thanks to every new one that's a new subscriber. Lots of new subscribers recently. If you want to know what the channel's all about, watch the intro video. That'll explain how this started as a joke. And now you, by you watching is paying for my new spray, which hopefully should arrive in the next week or two. So I'll see you all tomorrow. And don't forget to click like as well. Oh, and there's an outro as well sent to me by, um, by Jade of my combine on Wednesday, I think it was. Got another one off Heather as well. We'll use that one tomorrow. So thanks then if you've got any, send them on over on Instagram. And I'll see you later.